Hey there, welcome to another episode of Rob Unscripted. This episode brought to you by The Conundrum. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure that one out too. So I'm Rob Cohey, Industry Solution Evangelist for Autodesk's Manufacturing Industry Group. Uh, today I want to talk a little bit about some uh, a, a topic that we're getting a lot, a lot of questions in and around, and, and it's really a result of the convergence of BIM and digital prototyping. Um, and we're getting some questions on the interoperability between Revit and Inventor, uh, and uh, I figured I'd show a pretty good example uh, of, of how that can work. And I'll, I'll talk a little bit about what I blogged about uh, also, uh, the difference between uh, collaboration and interoperability. So let's go ahead and get started. So I've got my project here. Uh, just a, a house. Uh, nothing. Uh, it was a pretty cool house. Um, I dig it. <laughs> but uh, the only thing that I see wrong with this is that unless you've got some pretty serious hops, uh, you're not going to be able to get to the second floor. So we'll probably need to put some stairs in this. And just for, for my uh, ease of use here. I'm going to turn off uh, some of the visibility of, of some elements and and some of you Revit users are going to log in and go Rob is really bad in Revit and I would almost say that uh, yeah you're probably right uh, but uh, nevertheless um, I'm giving it my best shot so let's get this out of here and I want to bring in a um, spiral staircase uh, that, uh, that somebody had uh, we'll just say that somebody had already given to me um, in uh, in Inventor and and um, or from Inventor rather, and I brought it in to the project here as uh, the the pre-existing family from another job or something like that. And as you can see, it doesn't exactly line up with this particular project. The floor heights are different. Uh, the position of it uh, isn't necessarily where I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is um, isolate the, uh, the the floor, the second floor. Uh, and some some other reference walls in in Revit, and I want to bring this in, into Inventor so that I know what the floor heights are, where it needs to be positioned to uh, the other walls and such. So uh, Revit's kind of a WYSIWYG. Um, what you see is what you get. Export type of tool. So I'll just export that out as a SAT and open it up here in Inventor. Now one of the things that throws Inventor users off and Revit users off is um, reference to up. What is up? Well, um, in, uh, in in Inventor, Z is coming out at me at the screen, where in Revit, Z is going up, uh, kind of like in the sky. So it's no big deal. Um, just a quick, uh, uh, I'll, I'll change what is my home view and what is front. Uh, that way, when I go to the home view in Inventor, uh, everything is copacetic. So <clears throat> as you can see, I've got my, uh, my refer reference walls in there, and I'll bring in the uh, the, the spiral staircase from the previous project and position it where it needs to go um, and then I can take a look at it uh, you know in terms of where it needs to be placed relative to the wall um, how it needs to line up with the wall where do I need to uh, suggest to the architect that he cut out the hole uh, in the floor so that while you're going up the stairs you don't hit your head um, so we want to make sure that that's 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 passed across as well. So in one of my previous uh, videos, you saw me do a skeletal modeling technique, and 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 skeletal modeling was used to create uh, the same uh, the same technique was used to create this particular example as well. So I'll just go in here and figure out what's wrong, and and well, there's what's wrong. It's it's in that metric weird stuff that I don't know I'm just kidding <laughs> uh, I'll change it to uh, to what the what the floor height needs to be uh, in this particular e example uh, and uh, in reposition then the spiral staircase again relative to where it's going to be positioned in the uh, in the in, in the Revit file so as I'm finishing this out a little bit I'll, I'll, I'll touch on the difference between collaboration and interoperability so if I'm the mechanical designer or if I'm the fabricator of this spiral staircase, it's it's really not my job to change the architect's design. Um, I can certainly help influence the design, um, but in all reality, it's if I were to uh, have the capability to you know punch a hole in the actual floor, well maybe that's not what he wanted. 
um, and uh, you know the architect in, in in that case, the person responsible for the uh, uh, for the building's design, then loses a bit of control uh, if he were to give me control of modifying his elements. So. Um, a little bit different uh, workflow in that sense, you know. I certainly don't want to uh, give away the farm, um, but also uh, I want to be able to make sure that what I design is in fact going to fit the need. So here I'm able to, in Inventor, uh, make sure that the hole that we're going to recommend that they uh, they cut out of the floor or modify the floor uh, is in fact going to uh, uh, going to work. So even though that that was sat information brought into Inventor, I'm still able to inform my design um, by modifying the existing uh, floor so that I can make sure that I have the required clearance uh, between the stairs. So if I'm going upstairs, I don't bump my head type of thing, right? And I've got about six and a half feet. Uh, no, if this was my house, nobody in my family would bump their head, so uh, uh, we're good to go. So I've modified the design, made sure that it fit in the space that the architect is going to put it in by collaborating with, uh, with, with, with his building, uh, if you will. Now I need to send it back to him. So I'm going to bring it over into AC Exchange. I'm going to simplify the design through uh, shrink wrap options. So I want to fill in some holes, um, take out some of the detail of it. And this, you know, this particular assembly, certainly not complex, 21 parts. I'm going to take 21 parts and convert them into one consumable file that can be used in Revit architecture, Revit MEP, Revit structure, as well as AutoCAD architecture and AutoCAD MEP. So I've exported it out as our ADSK format and as you can see I'm going to open up the new version of that the one that fits this particular project it had a different floor height as compared to the one that I sent them on a previous project uh, in a in, in another pretend example that I'm that I'm referencing so now I'm playing the role of architect um, probably very poorly to all those Revit users out there um, but you should give me kudos for at least trying uh, so here I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit this, uh, the, this the sketch that represents uh, the floor. So I'll just draw a couple quick lines and trim back then uh, the, the area that needs to represent the void so that when people are coming up the stairs they don't hit their head. <laughs> scoot this over a little bit and I'll finish the floor and as you can see I now have a spiral staircase so that I can get up to the second floor in this particular design. And it's custom built for this project based upon my ability to collaborate between Revit and Inventor and then provide the architect back the information he needs so when they go to execute on this they buy my stuff. So there you go. There's an example of going from Revit to Inventor and then back to Revit. So I hope you enjoyed this one. Uh, please uh, feel free uh, as you have already to, uh, uh, to comment, make any suggestions that uh, we might be able to continue to improve these. Don't forget to check out our blog on the manufacturingcommunity.autodesk.com, the, uh, the link that you see there. And uh, we'll see you next time.